Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan. This is the Android App Show, episode number 70. This week, I have a couple games to review, oh. and uh, we're also going to talk about some bad patent news. Oh, bad news. Welcome to the Android App Show. The future of the telephone business is bright and rich with promise for the millions of telephone users like yourselves, whose quick acceptance and ready use of each improvement in telephone service has helped make possible an endless chain of accomplishments. <gasps> what will it be this time? Welcome to the show, everyone. This is Lane. This is Dave. And we are bringing you some uh, some good Android news this week, some bad Android news this week. It's all good news. And a couple, I mean, of, at couple least of reviews, it's, too. It's news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the news is kind of slow, though. I guess I kind of looked around, and like I didn't really see anything big. I mean, they talked about Android numbers and uh, whatever. I don't really think they mean that much anymore. So, you yeah. know, Android's on top, and... The news has not changed. It's still there. So it's still around. It's the ever-expanding Android universe now. Hey, you so. sound like a commercial. <laughs> Isn't that? Yeah, it's <clears throat> on all the Horizon ones. The ever-expanding yeah. uh, Android market universe or something. They Android always market. say. Android. There's tons of apps, yeah. folks. <laughs> bunches and bunches. Pretty excited about this new market, too, with the books and everything. Yeah, you like so, it? Yeah, are you going to start reviewing books? For us now on the no. uh, oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna read the <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the book show. That's right. Uh, uh, it's that it was just a book club, right? Yeah, though <laughs> so my mom did just get that. Uh, this is I kind of want to talk about this on the show too. My mom just got the new Kindle, uh, and it has the ads on it. Oh, you yeah? know, the e ink, uh, it doesn't use energy just to keep an image. So, right when you turn it off, it bloop brings up an ad, it's like Revlon or. Or really? whatever, yeah. And that's so it? when you have it sitting there, it, it's always displaying an ad. And then when you turn it on, you do whatever. It'll have an ad on the bottom, like mm. to buy stuff from Amazon. But it's very unobtrusive. It's very small compared to the screen, about this tall, and the ads about that. You know, it's very small manner. So, yeah. So screen this big, ad this big along the bottom. Uh, but then, you know, you shut it off again because you're done reading for the moment. You set it somewhere, boom, a different ad's on there, oh, full screen. What? So I'm just thinking some people are probably going to get freaked out thinking that yeah. it's using their battery, yeah. and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I got to say this. Amazon is genius. Whoever just whoever came up with this idea there that, hey, the screen can hold an image when we shut it off, so why not put an ad on it and sell the device for cheaper and make more money? That is just that is genius. It was my idea. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if ever a device is going to go free based on ads, it's going to end up being one of these Kindles. Oh yeah, so they get the so- they get the hardware cost down. They're making enough on advertising. Boom, Kindle's going to end up being free. Well, everybody thought that Google the Google was going to come out with one, and that was going to be like that. Yeah, the phone. Well, the yeah. before the G one came out, that's what. Mm-hmm. I, oh, it's going to do phone. all this stuff. Yeah, free phone and based on ads. Well, yeah, Google had another plan, which is we'll Make keep charging you and. <laughs> Make a crap ton, so yeah. yeah, that's what they're good at. Why give it away for free when people are willing to pay for it? Yeah, that's what my grandma said. Wait, what? Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she warned people. Yeah. There, there, there. <laughs> that was uh wow, Dave. Was- so how about we do some reviews this week? Uh, the first one I have coming up here is Slime versus Mushroom. It's kind of a ripoff of Plants vs Zombies, um, but this one is free. So really pretty good stuff Looks nice little cute. colors and uh some kind of some cool music for I think. a little rip-off game this has some pretty good graphics it looks yeah. like <laughs> let's see what it, oh. <laughs> Sorry. so you can turn the background music on and off yeah turn that thing up the sound effects uh or reset all the high scores pretty much what you expect Yeah, it's acting a little bit weird on the yeah. on the video output. Sorry. So you earn uh, coins and gems, and you can buy more guys. So it's a little bit different of an experience from Plants vs Zombies because you have to actually, uh, 
you know, earn this stuff. Oh, battery getting low. So I don't, I don't have enough to buy anybody right now, so I'll go right in here to stage four. And you have to select up to eight guys. I only have three. So your top purple one here, uh, like if you've played Plants vs. Zombies, I'll go ahead and just make the comparison. Uh, it's like the the sunflower that produces the all the stuff that you need. So, and then you gotta collect it and build more. And it gives you a few uh, it gives you a few minutes to go ahead and build up stuff. Cool. Just being a bugger on the video, wow, huh? Yeah. So the game, it's a little bit distorted if you're watching the video instead of listening to the audio. Um, but I think that that might have something to do with what the amp is doing. So I keep collecting these guys, and then if you hold down your finger, you can get a better idea of exactly where it's going to hit. Because like unlike on Plants vs. Zombies, you don't have a checkerboard. You just have these lines here. Uh, or lanes, I suppose you could call them. <laughs> you would. <laughs> I wouldn't. I try and I try to avoid using the name as much as possible. <laughs> that looks nice. So when you have free guys, okay, so you have to wait for each one to recharge too. I like the mechanic on this better than uh, Plants vs Zombies or the display or whatever that shows you the the recharge on plants versus zombies it's a little bit harder to to tell you know exactly how much time you have or whatever yeah but here it's a you get a pretty good idea click some more stuff so pretty basic guys right well this fish one fish looking guy i don't know what he is it cost me five to put uh, down, and it's like a mine. So he'll just take out one guy. Just keep building up here. I mean, it's your basic defense game. Not sure what I could say about this that I haven't already said about Plants vs. Zombies. Um, but I'm a big fan of the genre. There's just something, just something too. Defending, you know, uh, defending your home or defending something. It's just very addictive, especially in uh, in mobile game form. There we go. Let's get some more of these shooters out here. I'll throw out some of those. These guys can start coming at you pretty thick. And, it, you know, it, since it takes so long to upgrade, uh, you're going to want to use that mine guy that you can put out there to, you know, so that when people walk over it, yeah. it'll blow them up. Because, some, you know, it's not like he wouldn't eventually uh, get killed, but he might end up taking out one of your guys. And uh, there's pretty much no other uh, you know, thing. So to counteract it, no double shooters or anything for a while. So you have to get used to that. How are we doing, Dave? So that's uh, slime versus mushroom, and it's weird. It installs on your phone as I don't have the display up on here, um, but if I pull it up on my my app drawer, S V S M. So S versus M. Hmm. Interesting. So I've been thinking about that more now because, you know, we're working on an app. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, depending on what it says in the store, you know, differentiating between what's going to show there and what's going to show in the app drawer. It's yeah. always a uh, a question. So it's when I say developing an app, we have an app already out. We do. But I'm going in and hand coding it myself. So Whoa, dude. Hand good times. Coding. So we have another app. Uh, to review this week. This one is another free game. Ooh. I'm going to stick with the, the games. Uh, and this is a 3D platformer. So I put it in here in the show notes. Playformer. You're probably wondering what the heck is a playformer? 
Yeah, what's a play farmer? <laughs> oh, I thought you were being cute. Yeah. So, yeah, it's free. It's got a kind of, what did you call it? Like The Sims? or No, you said Second Life. Second Life, yeah. Looks like a Second Life graphic up there. Look at that. I don't know. Um, but it's nothing like Second Life at all. So let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the HDMI out cam. I don't know if this one will work better. Totally. Greetings. I, yeah, I think it was just one. that that game, that app. Yeah. Oh, it sounds funny. So I'll hit play. Go sounds to World like the One. These are these are levels that I beat. And you have advertising on the top left telling mm. you, hey, your phone is slow. That was in the last ad, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it's the same ad, you know, ad mob or whatever. So. Yeah. I don't know if they bid on location or what, but somebody's winning my screen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. So you to continue. The only control on this game is touching the screen to jump. Uh, you collect these gems, I guess. You want to jump over those birds. Uh, you have these bomb things you can jump on or over. But if you jump on, they launch you up. For this one I wanted to go under. You have a shield so you can go through these spikes. And you can jump up and climb up. See, I got the shield so I can just run it down here. Get this star. Oh, hurry. There it goes. I got it just in time. Ooh. Wow. Reminds me of when Sega CD came out. I don't know what the name of this game was, but like you always <laughs> ran and jumped towards stuff and you would climb up it. Yeah. Like if you were going to fall off the edge, it would just catch the edge and pull up. <laughs> That's funny. So it's, uh, it's kind of a, a simple game, especially when you're starting it out. Um, but each level gets noticeably more complex and they keep coming up with new things. You know, to uh, ins instead of just doing the same uh, challenges, like adding the first, they added those bombs that you jump on that kind of explode you up, make you jump higher. See, so now you have a zip line, and they keep coming up with oh dang it, with good ways to oh, to combine that. And I had to jump on top of that bomb. When I missed it, I was already dead. <laughs> I would. I, I really would wish that they had a quicker reload time uh, for levels. So, but they also have other things like a mystery box, just gives you a bunch of gems. Um, it's a times two. You know, just a uh, point multiplier. And here we go. Here we go for another slide. There we go. On that one. I probably didn't want to. I probably want to go for that star down there. See, that's the thing with some of these. You have to kind of watch uh, which direction you should probably be going. Some of them you get some pretty nice stuff. Uh, but again, only one button control. So. Honestly, I basically recommend this for anybody that has kids that they always end up passing their phone off to that you know that want to play games um, because it's it's entertaining enough for you, um, but it's uh, easy enough to control mm -hmm. for very young people, and uh, yeah, I think it's a, it, it kind of hits that middle ground. So there we go. Yeah, the music seems a little annoying though. Uh, maybe uh, on your headphones. I just playing it as it wasn't too bad. So it was like a bad. Version I didn't notice of, it. It was like a bad Wii game. Ooh, that's what it felt like to me. What does that mean, though? <laughs> a bad Wii game. You know uh, what it means. So those are the app reviews for this week. Hope you enjoy those. Uh, check them out. They're both free games. Why not? Yeah, why not? Totally. So. I uh, I started putting like download stats on the in the show notes. Yeah. So like the first game has between fifteen hundred thousand downloads, but I didn't put uh, them on here yet for this one. 
So I kind of figured people might be interested to see, yeah, you know, exactly how the game is doing. I think this one is uh, between 50 and 100 as well. But I'm going to pull it up here real quick. 100 and 500,000. So a little bit bigger. So pretty cool stuff. So what do you think? You want to check out some news? Yeah, let's do some news. We got lots of news to talk about this week. Yeah, there's some uh, oh, some quick news bit. stories. No big news story because I don't want to talk about patents again. Like, cause it's its own thing. Whatever. People are getting yeah, people are getting bored by it. But the ITC has uh, ruled against HTC, uh, and it might spell trouble for other Android makers. Um, the ITC is kind of the arbiter of what's allowed to be imported and uh, into the United States uh, because we have such uh complex uh patent laws you know and if something infringes then a company can take another company to the itc and say hey look don't let them bring this into the country because it's totally breaking the law here and the itc seems to agree with apple that htc is infringing on their patents uh but the bad news is you know however they're going to work that out is a whole you know that's a whole thing to be dealt with um, but the bad news is th- the patents that are being violated are basic patents that are a core function of Android. It's not something the HTC oh added no, to it. It's not good. So any any manufacturer of Android uh, could be blocked Shaking or could have boots. to pay Apple or sign up to some, you know, licensing scheme uh, for the patents. Otherwise, be blocked from import. So bad times, people. Again, I don't support software patents, and neither should you, but that's my opinion. So uh, an interesting trend, uh, the White Pages have launched an app, uh, but they didn't launch it on iPhone. Didn't they have an app? You might be thinking of Yellow Pages, Yelp. No, the White Pages, I thought they had a phone call, uh, like a caller ID app. Um, I don't... Th- Maybe. Well, they have this new... A guy I know up at Web Ascender in Lansing wrote it and sold it to the White Pages. Really? Yeah. For well, this is, a, this is a new app that, they, okay. that they're launching, though. They might be doing two. Yeah. You know, they might have more than one. Um, but this app's called Localicious. Oh. And instead of launching it on iOS first, like a lot of people have... Of course. Uh, they're actually launching it on Android first. That's what they did with the other one, too. So either the guy, you know, that's in charge with that is a an Android guy and he's like, you know, forget Apple, we'll do that later. <laughs> or uh they're starting to realize the trend that, you know, the growth is all going to the Android side and unless Apple can block them using their patents, then Android is probably going to be in the lead for quite a while. Yeah. So uh but it's interesting to see developers coming around to it. Mhm. Uh yeah, I just I would like to see some more games and uh, you know big titles launched on Android first, or at least simultaneously. I'm tired of seeing some good stuff on iOS and not coming across uh-huh. uh, to the other platforms. So uh, like this, like the Hulu Plus. Yeah. You know, this week they uh, they just announced that it's coming to four more devices: the HTC Evo 4G, which is what I have. Uh, the Thunderbolt, which we just reviewed, uh, the MyTouch 4G, which is what Brad has, and the G2, which I, I haven't seen or touched before, but I hear the keyboard's nice. Hmm. So it's a T-Mobile phone. Um, interesting, you know, they can, in the Android market, you can limit how your application is distributed based on device. So that's how they're saying, you know, this stuff has been opened up. Because uh, I guess, you know, whether you believe it or not, they tested it on these devices and now they say they work great. So, or they fix bugs that now aren't going to cause problems, whatever. Uh, if you've rooted your device and put it on there, you pretty much know what the issues were, which is probably almost nothing. Uh, it's probably yeah. just an artificial limitation. Um, but it's interesting. We covered an, uh, a story about apparatus a couple weeks ago about mm-hmm. how they pulled out of the Amazon store because... Amazon would not let them limit uh, what phones their app was being offered on. So, interesting stuff going on there. Um, 
when we ha we launch our app, we don't we don't limit it. No, <laughs> no we don't. If you want to install it, <laughs> you can install it. I'll let you. Thank you, Lane. So updates and everything. Can I install it on my Windows mobile phone? Um, you can't right now, but I think that really? that might eventually happen. <laughs> So <laughs> if we have I'll be releasing for BlackBerry. I don't know what's gonna like uh, be required to become a BlackBerry developer, but I'm gonna be releasing an app for BlackBerry if it's not too hard. BlackBerry, good stuff. Um, but the official Twitter app now has push notifications and multi-account switching on Android. This is awesome right here. Uh, we've talked about whether I think you kind of questioned before some of the apps that uh, it was a Twitter app that said is that a push notification and I said no it's polling mm -hmm. yeah you know the data well now the official Twitter app will save your battery mm -hmm. so no more polling and checking out every 15 minutes or whatever uh, the Twitter app will send a push notification to your phone and boom you'll have the uh, the info and I checked it out I put on uh, all of our accounts uh, and I, sure enough I am getting notified um, when we get stuff nice. and it's not it's not really putting a big hit on my battery not like this hdmi out mirroring that i've been leaving running this whole time and now i'm at nine percent whoopsie so so <laughs> the the push notifications they're just in the twitter app yep wow yeah so it well it'll trigger it to then go check and then it tells you you know so it's a little bit different from, well, that's how iOS works. Um, but the push notifications in the Twitter app can trigger a notification event. Whereas okay. in the push notifications on, and then, you know, and then it can do something. The app can do something based right, on that. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm not mistaken on iOS, whenever I got a push notification, I'd hit it and then the app would open and then it would have to go request the information. Uh, probably. Yeah. So Android can kind of perform better because you can get that data when you receive the push notification. Well, I think there's some ways it can do push, like send it to certain parts of your app. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was just a limitation or whatever of the app I was using. I know, I know there's a lot of apps, like second part, like third party kind of push notification apps on yeah. iOS. Like one, the one I use is Boxcar. Yeah. And then all my social networks go through that and they open up the correct app. Yeah. So that's good some, stuff. Some apps it actually goes to the tweet. With Facebook though, it just goes to the notifications area. You're right. <laughs> so and it's a little bit less open the Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Oh well. So I'd like uh, I close out with this uh, kind of a funny news story. I found a statistic today that says 34% of iPhone users think they have 4G. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have 4. I think. Didn't I have 4G? No, they remember 3G oh, just got turned just on got this year. Oh, we just got 3G. That's what it was. Yeah. But I have an iPhone 4. Yeah. Well, don't worry because, you know, at and is probably gobbling up T-Mobile against everybody's wishes. And uh, T-Mobile has 4G here already. So. I heard two times on NPR la yesterday. Yeah? People talking about their iPhone 4Gs. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's not There's iPhone a little bit 4G. Well, but there's a little bit of confusion because before uh, people were talking about 4G a lot, the 4G iPhone was the fourth generation iPhone. Right. You know, so, and th there's some dancing around how that goes because remember it's 3GS. So this yep. is technically like the fifth iPhone, right? Yeah. So it's not even the... It's, not, it's the iPhone 4. Yeah. It's iPhone 4, fifth generation. Yeah. So. They did that with, they got weird like that with iPods too. Yeah. Before they decided to stop <laughs> making those or something, I don't know. Yeah, well, they stopped yeah, talking about it so much. Yeah. You know. Who's heard of an iPod? There's all kinds of bad say. iPod permutations, though. We can, yeah. I could go on. But uh, coincidentally, the same percentage of people uh, were found to think that the entire Internet is dangerous <gasps> in a poll conducted less than a year ago. So back in August of last year, there was a, a poll by Avira and... Uh, they said 34% of people in that poll said no oh. matter what website you're on. Danger. You could, you know, danger, danger. Danger, danger. So, which, you know, you can argue probably if you're an IT professional, then you're probably like, well, yeah, that's what you tell everybody. But, you know, yeah. 
I can go to Google.com, and it's probably not dangerous. So Unless you go to Goggle.com. Maybe. Google might own that. I don't know. I don't know. Let's try it on this indestructible Chromebook. Bad don't put up the video, though. Oh, look. It's a total ripoff. Oh, wow. Look, this is genius. These people are really screwing people. It's got Goggle. Looks like Google. Congratulations. You've been selected for mm. the Detroit region because yeah. they know where we're at. Yeah. And it's some BS. You could win uh, a MacBook Air or an iPad 2 or a Walmart gift card. Nice. Something for everybody. Beautiful. Don't go to Goggle. Don't no. Google Goggle. So there you go. We well, can probably Google Goggle. Just don't Google Goggle. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> if you want to search around on our website, uh, you can pull up, you search through all of our show notes uh, to check and see if we were reviewed specific apps or talked about certain topics. Go to the Android app show dot com. Uh, click out on links there to all of our social networks. And I promise soon, if not already, there'll be a link up to our app. Uh, so if you're tired of us, com- you know, talking about the app on the show and you're like, install it already. Let me see what the big deal is. Yeah. The link will be on there, or you can just search on the Android market for Coefficient Media. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll probably be tweeting about it also on our Twitter account. That's at Android App Show. And you can find us there. We talk, we mention mention things uh, about Android and mobile devices and stuff, cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, we throw stuff out there all the time, uh, just like we do on YouTube.com slash the Android App Show. Yeah. So you can find a bunch of our videos on there, including some individual app reviews. I kind of slowed down on the individual app reviews lately, though. Yeah. I'm trying to... I'm working on the app, so, yeah. you know, got to switch gears. What's more important? Uh-huh. Got to get a cool app out there for all of our uh, the peeps. That would be cool if, like, we figured out some way to do YouTube embeds in the app. You can yeah. do that, yeah. With the time code. With the time code. So, like, you go to, like, oh, jump four minutes in. Oh, what was it? Vimeo has those, I think. Well, YouTube has them too. Does he? Yeah. Does yeah, he? He does. He does. But right. I don't know if they work on mobile. Hmm. We just thought of something right here on the show. I'm Googling. That's how this works. <laughs> don't Google it. Going furious. <laughs> yes. TheAndroidAppShow.com for more of that information. Not that, but that. There you go. And then Blueberry Podcast Network. The wonderful selection of podcasts in the Blueberry Podcast Network, independent, independently produced yes. for people like you. Yeah, if you like stuff like, like this, you want some other funky, fresh stuff, then... Funky. Yeah. Other people in their home, bedroom, studio, apartment. Go to Blueberry. <laughs> Blueberry. <laughs> yeah. Not Bayberry. Is that what that is? What? A fancy clothing. Burberry? Burberry. uh uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I that, don't know either. I'm not that slick. I don't wear boots. Have burberry. you seen me with my shorts and my transformer shirt? That's yes, we have seen you. Yeah. Look Obviously, at there's. Dang. Good view. There you go. <sighs> <laughs> the full review. <laughs> <laughs> if you want full review of some uh, hardware, though, uh, oh, yeah. go to the Android uh, We have all kinds of phones and tablets. Oh. Up on there. And we have an app for the Android Tech Show as well. So when that. you search for Coefficient Media on the Android market, you'll see both the Android App Show and the Android Tech Show. Yeah. One right after the other. It's cool. Some good stuff. All right. We'll be back next week with some more great Android stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.